I thought we couldn't buy very much chocolate and gum or military. We had to you know, ration every week. So I went back to, I, I, I should have been in bed instead of Berlin, but I got to get some movies. I thought it was going to be over soon. It wasn't over for another year and a half, but, well, another year, year almost. That's how dumb I was. But I, so I went back and went with the crew's co pilot engineer said, Give me a ration. What for? You are? You got permission? No, you get us court martial. I said, I promised those kids if they come back and stand in that space the more on the grass between the bombed out buildings and the barbed wire fence tomorrow, I'd fly and drop them chocolate if they'd share it. <laughs> and I'm going to do it. Give me your ration. And so John Pickering and Sergeant Elkins gave me their ration. Double handful of chocolate bars. Boy, hit him in the head with that going to earn 10 miles an hour and make the wrong impression. <laughs> so I had handkerchiefs and I took three handkerchiefs for parachutes. You, that didn't have any recreation when I grew up except tying rocks to handkerchiefs and throwing them in the air and watch them go down. <laughs> so I had a third of them on each handkerchief. And uh, they said, how are we going to know? When we come back tomorrow, how are you going to know which airplane? Every five minutes or one landing, if you don't come late in the day, we won't be able to see anything, let alone a little packing. And, uh, I remember before the war, I got a scholarship to learn to fly. I had no money. And I'd wiggle the wings when i come over the farm. But dad and mom know that was the that me in that airplane. So I said, we watch airplanes when they came out of West Berlin over East Germany and come over the field. And that we see a big airplane, wiggle the wings, and that's got to watch. Boy, they said, it's a start to get out here. Well, we made parachutes, did a test program back there, and then uh, t- tied them up. Came back the next day. That uh, night, night, got back that night at midnight. The next day, it came in about noon, clear day. The kids were in that little knot, hadn't told another soul. Wheel the wings, and they just went, blew up. Came over their heads, and uh, Sergeant Elkins said, we were only 100 feet in the air, uh-huh, and uh-huh. I, I fly in the airplane. It's an escape hatch for flares. If you get in trouble at night, you drop a flare and don't hit the farmer's house and land the field or something, you know, to open it for emergency. So Sergeant Elkins pushed him out of the flare chute. And then we worried whether or not anybody's seen it, but more if it come out the right place to get between the barbed wire fence and the barn, I mean the building. So we taxed out takeoff and right along the fence, three parachutes waving through the barbed wire and all the airplanes. So they wished to do, they wouldn't do that. Well, next week we did it again. Every week we did it for three weeks and I got caught. And then the general, the, the head general saved my neck for being court martialed. So I let him do it. <laughs> dummies, let them do it. And what a so, wonderful story. And so then stuff poured in from all over. It ended up, uh, the, my whole squadron was dropping all over the city, east in the east. We caused an international re- problem with the Soviets. They complained of the dirty capitalist trick, dropping ch- chocolate to the kids in East Berlin. It was a dirty capitalist uh, yeah, trick, it was. and I love it. <laughs> so we, we had to... We had to quit it. We we had to, the State Department had we had to stop dropping it over East Berlin. Because after we got a lot of it, I I'd see kids uh, playing the playgrounds. We'd come over, over East Berlin and we said, "Chuck it out!" And the kids <laughs> would let the soccer ball go that way, and that that didn't impress all at all. 